Today we're speedrunning Plants vs Zombies 2. Now we'll start our speedrun as soon as we choose to skip over the game's basic tutorial, which gives us hot sauce for Crazy Dave's taco, and ends up making us go back in time to Egypt. And here's where we have Egypt 1, where we learn about plant food. Plant food is a consumable that you get from killing zombies, and gives each plant a different powerful effect. So we'll begin with using it on our pea shooter, which makes them shoot a ton of peas, before planting a cabbage pot when we can, and using its plant food to attack zombies from multiple different lanes. Then we'll just keep using more plant food on our cabbage pots, finishing the level quickly. Next up is Egypt 2, where it's more or less the same thing. The most important thing is to take out zombies as quickly as possible, since this game works in a way where once you do around 50% of the current wave's health, it will send out the next, and that's how we can go faster throughout the run. Now we have Egypt 3, where the game gives us our first conveyor belt level, and unlocks the boomerang. These plants are good for Egypt since they hit the entire row of zombies and can go through graves, so we want to plant them in old lanes, and use plant food when we can to finish the level as fast as possible. Victory also gives us 10,000 coins, which will come in useful later. Now onto Egypt 4, we learn about powers. Here we get a tutorial for Power Snow, Power Toss, and Power Zap. Then we have a huge wave of zombies, and we'll just keep using Power Snow for it over and over, since it's our strongest instant, and finish out with Power Zap. And once we make it to Egypt 5, now we need to start playing a bit more strategically, and investing in sunflowers. We only need 3 for this level, since our plants aren't too expensive yet, and then we'll get a cabbage pulp before planting a mine on the 4th lane. An interesting thing about this game is most zombies do come in random patterns, but for some reason a few zombies in each level will always show up in the exact same place every time so we can use this to our advantage and quickly take out a buckethead. Then we'll finish up the level by planting cabbage pots everywhere and some boomerangs whenever we see camel zombies since they show up in sets of three or more, which leads us to our last Egypt level, Egypt 6, where it's another conveyor belt. And here I'm going to use a strategy that the game never actually tells you about, but for some reason this game is made in a way where if you have anything in your conveyor belt, it takes longer to give you your next plant. So that means for almost every conveyor level, we want to plant things as soon as they show up, making us end up with a huge amount of plants at the end. So with 6 Egypt levels done, we get our world keys, and if we wanted to, we could go straight to the game's finale, modern day. But it would be extremely slow to do any modern day levels with our current plants, so we're going to make two quick stops. First is Far Future, which introduces the gimmick of power tiles. These make it so if we plant something on a power tile, and then use plant food, any plants on corresponding power tiles will also use plant food for free. So for Far Future 1, our goal is to get 5 sunflowers and 5 pea shooters to do most of our damage. To give us time to set this up, we'll also start out the level by placing a potato mine to kill the first zombie, and we'll continue to do this for almost every level. Then whenever a jetpack zombie shows up, we'll place a cabbage pot to help with a bit of extra damage. After that, it's just about using plant food correctly, like using Using one on our power tiles for this wave of jetpack zombies and coneheads, and at the final wave, finishing with a power tile plant food, along with a cabbage bolt to clean up everything else. This will unlock us the laser bean, which is super important for the speedrun. We'll see its first use in Far Future 2, but not before putting down around 6 sunflowers and a couple pea shooters. The laser bean unfortunately costs 200 sun to plant, so it takes a bit, but it's super worth it since it blasts the entire lane of zombies instead of just the first. The laser bean is also crucial to take out this level's shield zombies since it goes through their shields and has a super strong plant food effect where it destroys everything in the lane. So after we get a few down and have them on our power tiles, it's a pretty simple victory. Now to finish out our Far Future levels, we have Far Future 3, where we want a collection of 8 sunflowers. Then our strategy at the beginning is to have pea shooters on the outside rows, and 2 cabbage pults in the middle where the triangle power tiles are. This makes our cabbage pults plant food really strong, and it pretty much just wipes the map out whenever we use it. Then to finish out, we'll put laser beans everywhere, and finishing this level unlocks the blover for us. Now we just have one more stop before modern day, which will be Jurassic Marsh 1. We only need to complete one level in Jurassic Marsh, since right away it gives us the primal pea shooters, which are insane. Our goal for this level to start is 10 sunflowers, so we use a few instants to stall like usual, things like our mines and iceberg lettuce, so we have a bit more time to save up money before planting the 175 cost primal peas. 
These pea shooters are better than the normal ones, since when they hit a zombie, they can either stun them or knock them back. But how they really become amazing is their combination with the blover, since if you activate a blover at the same time as a zombie gets knocked back, they get insta-killed. This also synergizes with plant food, since using one on the primal peas knocks multiple zombies back, meaning we can send a group of zombies away with a single blower. Now this combo is a bit tricky to time usually, especially since the primal peas don't always knock zombies back, but this strategy is incredibly important for the speedrun, because without it, we would not be able to win our next few levels. But with Jurassic Marsh done, we finished the easy levels, and now it's time for modern day one. Here we're going to go with the exact same strategy that we used in Jurassic Marsh 1, with 10 sunflowers and a bunch of primal peas, but the real problem comes in when the game sends out portals. These cause zombies from different time zones to come into the level, and they usually come in really close to our plants. My strategy is to usually put a walnut in front of them to stop them from getting farther and hopefully getting some lucky blovers. Unfortunately, a Tomb Raider zombie from the portal was able to get out some graves on my yard, which was a small problem, but not too bad. And the real problem comes in on the second flag, where a portal sent in zombies from the far future, which are some of the most difficult to deal with. And because of this, I allowed them to go straight to my mower, since it would be faster than trying to deal with them, and whenever a zombie hits one of our mowers, it insta-kills everything in the lane. Yeah, these mowers are going to be really useful for the speedrun, just like in day 2, which is even harder than day 1. First though, the game makes us use moonflowers, which are sunflowers that power up adjacent shadow plants. This is our only shadow plant for now, but we'll get some more later. They are pretty nice though, since we're only going to need to plant 6, since they power each other up and give us more sun. Now for day 2, our first problem comes in the first flag of the level, since we get a portal to Big Wave Beach, which probably has the hardest zombies in the game. Or actually, I can't really say multiple hardest, it's just one, the Octo Zombie. This guy throws octopuses at your plants, making them unable to do anything, and any shots from behind them get blocked by the octopus. So we really want to blover them away immediately, but unfortunately I didn't get the blover I needed, so we lost our top lane. Still, that's fine, we just gotta keep the top lane protected, and thankfully no more problems happen for that lane in the rest of the level. What did happen though is at the end our third and fourth lane both got octopus zombies, along with a gargantuar for the third lane, so I decided to just let them go to the lawnmowers, and yeah, I'm just so happy we have lawnmowers. So yeah, so far so good, and now we get a little break with modern day 3, since it's a conveyor belt level. In this level we want to place lightning reeds in the back, snapdragons in the front, and we'll use shrinking violets anytime there's a newspaper zombie or a big zombie on a lane, since shrinking violets shrink all zombies by them, making them take double damage. So yeah, not too bad of a level, and now it's time for modern day 4. Now for this level, we're going to take the laser bean instead of our primal pea shooters, since it gives us imps and glitter zombies to deal with. Imps are high damage, low health zombies that often come in groups, so laser beans are their best counter. Then for glitter zombies, they have a rainbow trail behind them protecting other zombies. They're super difficult to deal with, so the best we can do is let some of them go to the lawnmowers and use laser bean plant food for others. Really quickly though, I lost almost all my sunflowers, making it a really stressful situation. But luckily, we made it to the final wave of zombies just before they made it to my mowers, so I was able to insta-kill almost everything for free and mine the last remaining guy. Yeah, the game is really starting to get hard now. But for modern day 5, we're back to primal peas and blovers for two reasons. First, it's just a really great strategy, but second, this level introduces breakdancer zombies. These guys will kick other zombies forward, making them jump into the air, and we can use this short time in the air to insta-kill them with blovers, which is hilarious. That's what they get though, since without this strategy, they are super tough to deal with. Then for every other zombie, we just got our pea shooters, and we only lost one lawnmower this level, so I call that a win. But now we're on to one of the hardest levels in the whole game, Modern Day 6. This level doesn't just make you beat the zombies, but we also need to get a total of 4000 sun before we finish it. Now they do at least give us gold tiles, which gives extra sun when a plant is placed on them, but it's still super hard. My strategy for this is to place all my cheap guys like iceberg lettuce, mines, and walnuts in the front, and plant as many sunflowers as possible in the back. The worst part of this level though is the imp porters. These little dudes drop tents on gold tiles, which continues to spawn more zombies until we destroy it. 
I want to blow for them away before they can do so, but as you can imagine, that's almost impossible to consistently do. So what I rely on is hoping I can blow over a few lanes and letting others go to mowers. Honestly though, I'm less concerned with surviving than I am the sun requirement. So I really focused on getting as many sunflowers as possible out, and by the end we were just barely able to hit our goal and finish out the remaining zombies. Now on to modern day 7, we need to deal with some more octo zombies which are always annoying, but for this level we have the saving grace of knowing the first octo zombie will always come on the fourth lane. So after the first couple of imps come through, we place a mine right at the end, and he gets taken out before doing any of his annoying gimmicks. Then the rest of the level was a lot of annoying stuff like newspaper zombies, breakdancer zombies, and jester zombies which don't get blown back by our primal peas. So in the end, I had to sacrifice every single one of my mowers in this level to survive, but at least we did. And after that, it's time for a break from the tough stuff since we get our first matching minigame. For modern day eight, we need to match three or more of the same plant and get a total of 100 matches. For every match we get, we'll also get some sun so we can upgrade our plants to stop the zombies from eating them, since once a plant gets eaten, we can no longer use that space for matching. The only real strategy here is to look for matches for 4 plants since that counts as 2 matches, or 5 plants since that counts for 3, and other than that, I just hope I get good RNG to get a string of matches. So yeah, nothing really special about this level. Next up for modern day 9, we don't get to choose our selection of plants and instead use the selection that the game gives us. And for this one, we have the Moonflower to get Sun, Nightshade which will smack zombies with their leaves and can hurl projectiles when they're by Moonflowers, Grave Busters which consume the graves they're planted on, and the Time Warp which rewinds time and sends zombies back to where they started, but heals them in the process. So in general, we want to get down 5 or 6 Moonflowers, a bunch of Nightshades, and get rid of graves as much as possible. The final wave is the only real problem for this level, since we can quickly get overwhelmed by the Tomb Razor zombies and their Tomb Stones, but with a few lawnmowers, we finish this one out. Now we're on to modern day 10, which is a pretty terrifying level. For this one, we'll bring our Moonflower, newly acquired Nightshade, Laser Bean, Blover, Walnut, and Mine. And for this level, our biggest objective at the beginning is to get as many Laser Beans as possible. This is because the game throws Weasel Hoarders at us, which spawn weasels that are really weak but destroy plants really quickly. This means Laser Beans are the only real reliable way to deal with them, and we need one for every lane. We also bring the blow over here just so we can deal with all those flying enemies. Honestly though, this level is just about holding on until the last flag since a bunch of gigantic enemies spawn right at the end. But right before that, I unfortunately got overwhelmed in my middle row and we had to buy our first power of the run. We can use some of the coins we got earlier to use different power ups, like right here I use the snow power for 1150 coins. Obviously, we won't be using any real money or microtransactions for this speedrun, but the coins we get for free are fair game, and these will be really important for the later levels. But anyways, modern day 11 time, and here we finally get another really useful plant, the Shadow Shroom. Shadow Shrooms are a single use plant that explode and poison zombies on impact. Then the poison does damage over time, which is especially useful for things like newspaper zombies. Even better than that though, they also have an amazing plant food effect where they poison almost every zombie on the lawn unless they're immune to it. It really is a nice saving grace after struggling for so long, but we still got a lot of hard levels to go, like modern day 12, which might be the second hardest level in this speedrun. This is because the level gives us the restriction of only losing a maximum of 10 plants the entire level. So at the beginning, we can't afford to use things like potato mines, and instead we'll start with a walnut. In general, the most important thing to do is get laser beans though, since this level also introduces excavator zombies, which block incoming projectiles with their shovels and throw plants behind them. Then there's also things like chickens, which will eat all your plants super quickly, and dinosaurs, which throw zombies forward. So I'm really just focused on taking everything out before it can do too much damage, which is incredibly difficult. I need to have 100% focus focus this entire level, paying attention to my plant count and locations of everything because I've lost way too many speedruns on this level. But thankfully, with a little help from my snow power, I was able to make it through with only one plant to spare. Yeah, I can't believe I one-shotted this. And to give us a little break from the stress, we have some more matching for modern day 13. This time we need 150 matches, which does take a lot of time, but at least I get a chance to call my heart before our next level. But to be honest, modern day 14 isn't too bad either, since it's another level where the game gives us a selection of plants and we need to use those instead of choosing our own. 
It's a pretty standard level where we just set up some moonflowers and use nightshades and shadow shrooms as a big part of our damage. Then we also have shrinking violets, which are pretty nice, but honestly not too much to say here. Modern day 15 gets tough again though, since this time we have to protect two primal walnuts. If one of them gets eaten, then we lose the level. And honestly, you'd expect them to have a lot more hit points, but they'll die super quickly if we're not careful. The big things to worry about here are the cannons, which shoot multiple imps, which we'll use laser beans for, along with the swashbuckler zombies, which land four tiles into our lawn if we don't blow over them away. Honestly though, I'm pretty happy with how this level turned out, because I've died here before, and things actually went pretty smoothly this time. So on to modern day 16, and we have another conveyor belt level, along with no lawnmowers. And the no lawnmowers is especially concerning since every enemy in this level is a gargantuar. But in general, we just want winter melons on every lane to slow the gargantuars, and then either a coconut cannon or citron to do huge bursts of damage. The most annoying thing about this level though is the imps that the gargantuars throw once they get low on HP. But as long as I don't play stupidly, I've never really had any problems with this one. Now for modern day 17, we get an amazing plant, the Dusk Lobber. This is a shadow plant that lobs explosive buds down their lane in up to 3 lanes when powered up. And this is incredibly nice because they just do a ton of damage and make a lot of these next few levels much easier. Other than them, we just want to get a few nightshades out by the moonflowers and use poison plant food whenever there's a big wave. Next, modern day 18 is pretty much going to be the exact same strategy, just with tougher zombies to deal with. The big issue are newspaper zombies that we always want to poison instead of breaking their newspapers, and the zombie bulls, which run fast until they hit a plant, before flinging an imp forward, so I want to make sure I place a cheap plant in front of them as soon as they spawn. And with only one mower lost, we're on to modern day 19, where it's another conveyor belt level. Not too much to say about this one, it's pretty much just place primal pea shooters and laser beans on each lane, and I like planting escape routes near the front, since they explode zombies on contact. But now for modern day 20, we have another level where there are gold tiles, but thankfully we don't have a sun requirement like last time. In general, I like placing a few of my one-use plants on them, that way we get some extra sun here and there, but the main source of damage for this level is yet again the dust clobbers, cause they're just so good. And that's why we're yet again using them for modern day 21, but this level is much scarier than the previous one, since the game finally introduces football zombies. These zombies rush forward until they collide with a plant, and they insta-kill that plant. So I really need to be on top of my game and always have a plant at the end of lane 2 or 4 since that's where they usually spawn for this level. This is another level though where we really just want to hold out to the last flag when finally we can let everything go to the mowers and barely survive. But unfortunately, I did have a portal left over after I used my mowers which spawned an octo zombie so I decided to use a lightning power to clean him up. Next up, day 22 is our third matching level, so not too much to say about it. It's pretty quick though, which is nice since it's only 75 matches. Then on day 23, we get another really good plant, the Grimrose. These guys are nice because they insta-kill three zombies in their lane before expiring, as long as the zombies aren't too large or mechanical. Which means finally we have one of the best counters in the game to newspaper zombies, octo zombies, football zombies, and any of those other annoying guys. So for this level, we either use Poison or Grim Roses for all the hard guys, and let our Dusk Lobbers clean everything else up. Then finally for the Gargantra at the end, we let him go to the mower, and that finishes this one. Next for day 24, it's the exact same strategy as last time, but a bit more difficult because this level has football zombies. Still, it's pretty much just about keeping on your toes and paying attention, and we got another win. Now for day 25, it's a really stressful level. It's another conveyor belt level, but this time our only plant is the intensive carrot, which brings a plant back to life, and we have to choose which preset plants we want to revive. My general strategy is to get every kernel pulp first, since they can stun zombies in their lanes. Then I like getting the fume shrooms in the front so they can block any football zombies from coming forward. We really want to keep these up because all the lanes converge to the middle at the end, and we want to save our middle lawnmower until the very last second. Then the last zombie to really worry about is the excavator zombie, since he'll make all our plant locations really weird, but in the end, I was just barely able to hold on and finish with some mowing. Now for day 26, we're back to dust globber, poison, and grim rose strats. The big problem with this level though is that it has discotron 3000s, which spawn disco jetpack zombies, and the discotrons can't be grim rose, along with gargantuars, which are always annoying. For the discotron though, we just need to make sure we always have our blover ready to deal with the constant jetpack zombies that spawn 
since they can really overwhelm us, and it's another level where I just do my best to hold on for dear life. I did end up having to use a zap power at the very end, but overall, it went pretty well. Next, day 27 is our last matching, this time for 100 matches. Not too much to say, we just do the thing. And we're on to day 28, where we're finally using the Primal Pea Shooter and Blover combo again. I know it's been a while since we've really been liking our Shadow Plants, but this level is good for Primal Pea Strats, since we need to get at least 3000 Sun before winning. So because of this, Primal Pea Shooters are the best since they can keep everything far away from our Sunflowers. The big problem for this level is Football Zombies though, since they're always annoying, and Wizard Zombies since they turn our plants into sheep until they die, but I was able to get it done in honestly a pretty great way. Next up is Day 29, which is pretty tough since there's a ton of graves all around, and yet again we need to deal with Football Zombies. This game is obsessed with these guys now, but like usual, as long as we keep track of our Dusk Clobbers and Grim Roses, it isn't too bad until the very end end, where it bombards us with a bunch of gargantures. So I did lose a couple lanes and had a bit of a scare at the end, but I was barely able to squeak by with another victory, leading us to the absolute hardest level in this entire speedrun, and maybe even the entire franchise of Plants vs Zombies. This is day 30, and its gimmick is we can't let any zombies touch our flowers. This means we no longer have the entire yard, and if a zombie even gets 4 spaces far, we lose. So because of this, I play this level really passively at the beginning. We can stall the first zombie with a walnut, and then let the balloon zombie get all the way till the end, this way we can save up a bunch of sun, and get some primal peas down. Also, while we're doing this, we want to place a ton of different plants in the front of the yard. Walnuts, iceberg lettuce, mines, and even sunflowers we want everywhere to give us more time to think. These are especially important when football zombies come by, since they can completely ruin us if we aren't ready. Then it's just about paying complete attention to the game, and hoping we can get really good blovers to push the zombies away. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this level has gargantures too, so that's fun, but thankfully we still have a good amount of money left, and while I like saving some for later, this level is a big reason why we want to have a nice stash. In the end, with my heart beating out of my chest, I was finally able to get a victory, and it felt amazing. Now we just have 4 levels left, starting with Day 31. In Modern Day 31 is pretty hard, but it's so much better on my emotions than our previous level. Big thing for this level is to set up a few laser beans for the cannons that show up, and use Grim Roses on the football zombies. And before we get to our last 3 boss levels, hope you've been enjoying the video, and if you want me to do a 100% speedrun for this game with every single level in every world, let me know in the comments. Anyways, Modern Day 32 time, and this boss fight can be one of three different fights, each in a different time zone. Thankfully we got Egypt first try though, which is the fastest, so we can enact a really cool strategy. Now all of these last three boss fight levels will be conveyor belt levels, and each of them will have different plants that we can use. For Egypt, we get a few plants like the Kernel Pulse, Coconut Cannons, Spring Beans, and the most important plant for this fight, the Snapdragon. Our general strategy is to put pretty much all of our plants near the back, and have them deal with the zombies that the boss spawns, occasionally using mowers. But for the Snapdragon, we put it right at the front, and anytime we get plant food, we use it on our Snapdragons and get a huge burst of damage on the boss. To beat the level, we need to bring the boss's health bar all the way down, and this is by far the most efficient way to do so, and is a really cool strategy. In the end, we did lose all our mowers, and ended up needing to use some money for some powers, so we didn't lose, but we got a pretty quick win, and 4,000 coins is a prize. Next for day 33, unfortunately we didn't get immediately lucky. The boss fight we want for this one is far future, but I had to reset a few times since I was getting the wrong bosses. After a while though, we got what we needed, and it was time to make a big collection of puff shrooms in the front, and fume shrooms in the back. Then we'll also get some power tiles, which we'll use on two of our puff shrooms and all of our fume shrooms. This is a good strategy, because when a puff shroom gets plant food, it causes all puff shrooms to shoot a spore barrage, which causes massive damage to the boss. Then we also add on the sprays for every fume shroom, which pushes all zombies back, and we have a really safe and quick fight. Oh, we also add magnets sometimes, taking helmets from zombies, which aren't the most important thing, but they were there. So finally, we're onto the last level in the game, Day 34. For this one, I had to reset once, but I'll take it since this level has 4 possible boss fights it can be, and the one we want is Frostbite Cave. For this level, we want to wait a tiny bit at the start before planting anything, since the boss attacks our plants directly and can one-shot them. But then, after waiting a bit so we can build up our forces, we can use a new superpower that's just for Frostbite Caves, the Fire Power. This is the biggest reason why we wanted to save a lot of our money, because now we can use the fire until we stun the boss and allow our plants to do damage. 
Then once he starts attacking again, we use more fire and continue this until the boss is finally taken down. Yeah, you can probably see why we needed this boss specifically. And finally, the speedrun ends once we pick up the taco with a waffle in it, giving us a time of 2.01.12, which is fourth place on the speedrun leaderboards. Alright, subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye.